What's the number one reason that you buy a gaming console? Is it because it looks cool? Is it because some YouTuber told you to do it? Is it because you want to keep up with the Kardashians? No, it's none of those reasons. The only reason you buy a video game console is to play video games. And the only reason you should be buying one over the other is for its exclusive games. Screw this whole console wars thing. Why not gaming wars? We love the Switch for a multitude of reasons, but the main one is because its library of games is both unique and undoubtedly fun. So we've compiled a list of 10 of the best games that are only available to play on your Nintendo Switch. Unfortunately, you won't be seeing Breath of the Wild or Mario Kart 8 here. As much as they are two of the best games to play on the console, they are available elsewhere. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more weekly Nintendo content. And if you do like today's video, then hitting the like button also helps us out a lot too. But let's get down to business, eh? Here are 10 of the best exclusives on the Nintendo Switch. Seeing as though this is a celebration of Nintendo games, is there really a more fitting way to kick things off than with Super Smash Bros Ultimate? This beast is an ode to not just Nintendo, but to gaming in general. We've talked about Smash quite a bit on the channel before because we're just such big fans of it. In our opinion, it is the greatest fighter of all time. Sure, it's not as brutal as Mortal Kombat or as refined as Street Fighter, but who doesn't want to see their favorite video game characters from different franchises go head to head? Ever had an argument with a friend over the best fighting game? Well, why not pick up Smash and put Ryo against Kazuya in the ultimate decider of Street Fighter versus Tekken? How about Simon Belmont versus Samus Aran to decide which is the ultimate Metroidvania? Or maybe you're a more casual fan and just want Mario to fight some Pokemon. If you are a fan of games, then you honestly owe it to yourself to at least try Super Smash Bros Ultimate. There is something here for everyone whether that's competitive online play with your friends from overseas or in a more casual co-op setting on your couch. We use it to settle domestic disputes. While this next title is definitely a huge release, we still don't hear a lot of people talking about it these days, which is honestly a shame because it's an incredible game. Fire Emblem Three Houses is easily one of my favorite tactical RPGs of all time. And I know that we're sort of oversaturated with tactical RPGs at the moment, but don't let that stop you from picking this one up. The strategic nature of the battle system here is very well done, but I can't help but feel like this game really shines brightest when you look into some of the other mechanics it has to offer that when combined with the battle system really make this game what it is. Fire Emblem Three Houses takes place at a school that consists of, you guessed it, three houses. Here you work as a professor where you will tutor one of these houses. Each house has its own storyline, so the decision of whether you want to lead the Golden Deer, the Black Eagle or Blue Lion houses completely changes the course of your adventure. So technically you have to play three houses three times to unlock all of the storylines and even more to unlock all of the endings. Throughout the game you have the ability to make choices which change the turn of events. This game has literally hundreds of hours of content and it gives you full control to create your own unique adventure. You also have full control over your class who you can mould into whoever you want them to be. You're able to decide what classes they take which in turn hones a certain skill based on their strengths and weaknesses. Or not, it's up to you, but each student does have their own unique talents so taking advantage of these is recommended especially since they will be taking their skills onto the battlefield, so it's only their life on the line. You can even take your students out on little dates to try and impress them to make them like you. These simulation mechanics really make you feel like you know all of your students, and the amount of control you feel like you have over the story really makes Fire Emblem Free Houses one of the best exclusives on Switch. Teachers are not allowed to date their students, do they? Yeah, it is weird. It's not right. <laughs> It's illegal, actually. Shin Megami Tensei V is a relatively recent addition to the Switch library. We ummed and ahmed for a while about whether to include this one on the list, but ultimately it was Laura who convinced me to do so. He literally told me that it was one of his favourite games of all time, and I just feel like you can't get a better recommendation than that. I'm just aware that it's not necessarily for everyone. But as Laura put it, screw it, this is our list. 
And if we can include a few less obvious games here and potentially introduce somebody to something new, then we've ultimately done our jobs. Shin Megami Tensei is the central series in the Megami Tensei franchise, of which the Persona games are also a part of. But don't worry too much about all that, because SMT5 is practically a standalone title with its own independent story. This was my first introduction to the series, and it seems like just as good a place to start as any. I am a sucker for RPGs, and I do love me some turn-based combat, and this game scratches both of those itches wonderfully. It plays a little like Pokemon in a way, where you catch a bunch of monsters to fight for you, and the obvious combat similarities. However, SMT5 covers some very heavy themes, and is likely the most adult game here. Religion and creationism are big players, and I have no doubt that the series has managed to piss off a few people with its depictions of deities such as Vishnu and the Rainbow Serpent, and their titles as demons. But for us, this just adds substance and goes to show that Atlas Studios are not playing it safe. We are so pleasantly surprised that this is a Switch exclusive and that Nintendo actually endorses it. Many have claimed that this title is too hard, and don't get me wrong, it's definitely not easy, but it does warn you at the start to put it on a lower difficulty if this is your first time with the franchise. However, I didn't listen to this warning and went with standard difficulty. And as long as you're willing to put in the time and do all of the side quests, you should be fine. It's so fun, I honestly couldn't imagine not wanting to do the side quests. As Laura mentioned, this has quickly become one of my favorite games, not just on the Switch, but in general. I highly recommend it, especially if you're an RPG fan. If you're looking for a great Switch exclusive, then Luigi's Mansion 3 is a no-brainer. It's an incredible experience in both single or multiplayer, which is actually how we played it, and we just feel like Mario's brother doesn't get enough of the limelight, and he deserves it. In classic Luigi's Mansion style, you've somehow found yourself in some paranormally infested mansion, and it's your job to clear out all the ghosties. In this game, you're armed with a poltergust to help you with your de-ghosting. And this is where the Switch's motion controls come in. You're able to control your poltergust by waving your Joy-Cons about, which is so much fun. And as you progress, you're able to unlock other accessories, which help you both suck up ghosts and solve puzzles. The puzzles are for the most part pretty easy, but sometimes they can get a little tricky and you will catch yourself at one point or another shooting plungers at every surface just in case. The puzzles are mostly solved by some sort of poltergust attachment, but the main focus of the gameplay features my personal favourite character, Luigi. Luigi somehow has the ability to transfer his consciousness into this jelly clone of himself and use him to assist in combat, solve puzzles and locate secret areas in the game. The best part about Luigi is that he can also be controlled by a second player, which totally transforms the game into an awesome multiplayer experience. I played the game both ways, and I must say that playing Luigi's Mansion 3 multiplayer with my buddy Luigi always by my side was definitely the most fun. Poor Luigi always has to live in Mario's shadow, but honestly I think that Luigi's Mansion 3 is right up there with the big Mario titles on the Switch. If you own a Nintendo Switch, you should also do yourself a favour and own Luigi's Mansion 3. You won't regret it. Can you really talk about Nintendo exclusives without mentioning Pokemon? The answer is no. No you can't. The Switch is home to many fantastic Pokemon titles, from Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Sword and Shield, to New Pokemon Snap. But the one that takes the cake and has now become THE Pokemon game to play, while also being a must own on the Switch, is Pokemon Legends Arceus. We recently did a full review on this one, so make sure you go and check that video out if you want to see Laura throw eggs at me. And as a result, we're going to keep it relatively short here. Arceus is everything the fans have been asking for from a Pokemon game, without being so drastically different that it alienates anyone. It throws a more action-adventure styled spin on the tried and true franchise and takes place within beautiful open areas that reward exploration. It's the best Pokemon game of all time. Welcome to the Stardew Valley of golf games. We've said this many a time, but one of the Switch's strong suits definitely lies in its huge and vibrant library of indies. There is no better way than to play these charming titles than in handheld, curled up on the couch under a blanket with a cup of tea. So while there are still many incredible AAA titles out there that could have potentially gone on this list, 
we just felt like we wouldn't have captured the true spirit of the Switch without chucking in an indie or two. And Golf Story, while it might not look like much, is a deceptively captivating title. I'm not the biggest fan of sports games in general, maybe I just feel like they're not as great at relieving my angst as beating butts. But this calming, satisfying and hilarious RPG definitely does the trick for me. The true star of Golf Story, while you could say is its beautifully animated text bubbles and humour, or its adorable 16-bit art style and equally calming soundtrack, is the golf. The sound design is so well crafted in this game and coupled with the HD rumble, your putts and swings all feel so alive. The vibration when you make a chip or the way that the music changes to become so intense around the last putt really work together to make the golfing experience one of the best I've ever had. And yes, that does include real life golf. Just listen to this and tell me it doesn't make you feel some kind of way. The mechanics are also spot on. You're able to have a surprising amount of control in your swing, and it's definitely not as easy as hitting two buttons at the right time. You have a selection of clubs to choose from, along with slopes and wind to contend with, which at the beginning are somewhat difficult to read, but it just makes the mastery of the part all the more satisfying. You also have different modes for your swing, such as pressing Y for increased precision, or XL to get yourself out of any sandy situations that you or the mischievous golf course golfers may have gotten you into. There is a lot to the golf mechanics in this game, which makes it fun and satisfying to master, and that is good because it's what all of the RPG elements revolve around. Your golf story consists of a series of golf challenges that once won, will advance the storyline until you complete the 16 hour campaign. There's also disc golf, mini golf, and drone golf, which all have their own mechanics to master, which does offer some nice variety to your golfing. Honestly, Golf Story is such a charming and unique adventure, and for around $23, you can't go wrong. How often is an indie game so good that Nintendo trusts the devs with one of their leading IPs, allowing the small time studio to create a fully realized game in its own style with Nintendo characters? Honestly, we can only think of one time, and the result was the absolutely fantastic Cadence of Hyrule. The studio behind this one, Brace Yourself Games, first released Crypt of the Necro Dancer in 2015, an action-adventure rhythm game with roguelike elements. Apparently, Nintendo was pretty impressed as they licensed out The Legend of Zelda and allowed Brace Yourself to combine it with the Crypt of the Necro Dancer gameplay. In Cadence, you're only able to move, attack, and defend to the beat of the music, which is a collection of your favorite Zelda tunes, by the way. This mechanic is a little tough to get used to, as there's not really anything else like it, so be prepared to die a lot at the start. But it makes it all the more satisfying once you get used to it and are able to get from one end of the map to the other without dying. This game is a true delight and is honestly just as good as any of the mainline Zelda games. A big call, I know. There's dungeons with challenging boss fights, puzzles galore, and even all of your favorite items that will open up new areas of the map for you. Literally all of the best Zelda mechanics are here. There's great replayability here as well, as the overworld and dungeons are randomly generated meaning that no two playthroughs will ever be the same. There's also co-op, so you can dance your way through Hyrule with a friend. The Switch is an indie machine, and Cadence of Hyrule is among the best it has to offer. It felt like we were waiting an eternity for a new Metroid game, and Metroid Dread did not disappoint. This is by far the best installation in the gaming franchise that named an entire freaking genre, and that is saying something. This game sat in development for 15 years, waiting for the technology of Nintendo systems to advance to the point where this idea could be made into reality. And thankfully for us, 2021 was that year. Like any Metroid game, you're gonna be in for a pretty brutal time, but isn't that part of the Metroid experience? It just wouldn't be the same if it didn't pose any sort of challenge. But honestly, if I can do it, so can you. The game is hard and the boss battles can get a little crazy, but it's not unplayable by any means. Practice makes perfect and luckily for her, Samus has more lives than a cat. 
The Emmys are really where the challenge lies for me. These things are indestructible and to put it bluntly, nightmare fuel. Your best bet is to never bump into one and if you do, just run. Even when you are armed with the weapons needed to defeat them, actually doing so is still freakishly hard. But that's part of the beauty of Metroid for me anyway. The satisfaction of taking down just one of these Emmys fuels you to keep going and take them all down. Even if the sound that they make haunts me in my dreams. <laughs> Metroid Dread is definitely worth the challenge it presents, but we do get that not everybody's into self-masochism, and that's okay. I do know people through my Instagram that didn't pick it up because they knew that it was hard and they just weren't into it. And Nintendo heard your cries, and they've recently released a rookie mode, making Dread far more accessible to a wider audience, which is really cool. They also released a one-hit kill mode for the hardcore masochists out there. With the release of these new modes, now is the best time to pick up Metroid Dread. The controls are flawless, the graphics and colours are breathtaking, and the gameplay is super satisfying. If you were a little anxious to pick it up because you thought it might be too hard or you didn't know if you would like it, I definitely recommend giving it another chance. Ah, Mario Odyssey, you beautiful, beautiful game. You thought we were going to neglect the Red Plumber, didn't you? Or, well, maybe you didn't. He is synonymous with Nintendo after all. The Mario platformers are always classics, and you should most definitely own whatever one is available on whatever Nintendo console you have. For this generation, we got Super Mario Odyssey, which launched pretty early in the Switch's life cycle, and to this day is still one of the best games on the system and a must buy. 3D platformers are probably my favorite genre of games, and despite the nostalgia I feel for a lot of them, Super Mario Odyssey is definitely one of the best there is. Mario teams up with Cappy from the Cap Kingdom in order to rescue Princess Peach from Bowser once again, who this time is trying to forcibly marry her. Honestly man, that guy is messed up in the head. Maybe Mario should take on some more plumbing jobs and invest in some security. Together you'll take the airship, the Odyssey, and head to a large array of kingdoms where Bowser is greedily collecting wedding supplies. You'll have to collect power moons to fuel the Odyssey in order to continue chasing Bowser through the world. All of the kingdoms, which act as levels, are vastly different from one another and are extremely inventive, with new enemies, obstacles and inhabitants in each. The open design of these levels, as well as the ridiculous amount of power moons to collect, means that you are constantly on a journey of discovery, with new secrets behind every corner. Super Mario Odyssey really brought the ideas from Mario 64 into the modern age, and was an instant classic. There's fun to be had here by all ages and all skill levels. Was there ever any question of this game being included? Any top Switch game list without it is, well, wrong. Here's a game that I'm sure needs no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. Animal Crossing New Horizons is an absolute must own on the Switch. It's a social simulation game with no rules where you just do whatever you want on your own little island. This will mainly consist of finding villagers to populate your island getaway, fishing, watering flowers, collecting DIYs and decorating and terraforming your island however you want. Now I know that some of you may be thinking, what the hell's the point? But the point is that there is no point. It's a place to go and relax and unwind and let your creativity take you wherever it wants to go. Honestly, you will never know stress relief until you've played Animal Crossing New Horizons. I think a lot of people write this game off because it seems directionless. Yep, that was me. But Animal Crossing is best experienced rather than explained. I watched Laura play this one for about two days before I was like, yep, I need this game. And trust me when I say that you need this game too. New Horizons is also the best place to start. Nintendo sees the vast community that this title has inspired and they are really good at producing new updates and content to keep everybody visiting their villages. You're able to dive for sea critters, sail out to islands to collect these little doodads, visit Brewster at his coffee shop, and if you've renovated your island to perfection, there is also the Happy Home Designer DLC where you will have an endless sea of rooms that need decorating. Animal Crossing New Horizons is truly a magical experience that I cannot recommend enough. It is so relaxing and so addictive and with all of the updates you can literally play it forever. 
Trust me, I have an embarrassing amount of hours on this game and I don't regret any of them. I don't think that I'm the only one that thinks that this game truly heals the soul. Therapy now comes at the cheap price of $79.99 and that is much cheaper than usual. Obviously Nintendo has so many incredible exclusives that we couldn't fit them all in one video. So let us know in the comments below if we missed out any of your favorites and we might try sneak them in a part two. Don't forget to hit that exclusive subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or a thumbs down if you didn't. I'm Tom and this is Laura from Some Kind of Gaming. Thank you so much for watching.